Wormwood. Wormwood, my dear, my very dear Wormwood. This is a public service announcement. A series of recordings has apparently come to light. If you'll excuse the disgusting word, light. Well, Screwtape Letters is a series of letters from a senior demon to an underling who turns out to be Screwtape's nephew. So should I just take it from a physical action rather than I, I'm not on a page for this or... Yeah, no, yeah, we'll, get, we'll, well, we'll get the page anyway so okay. you can see where the... If you can imagine an elderly and very experienced demon in the lower archy of hell, who's semi-retired but still gets involved now and again. And he's sending his young nephew out to start addressing human beings and dragging them down into the, into the lower regions of hell. <laughs> what makes them so powerful is that C.S. Lewis turned the whole thing on its head. That basically what we would consider the negatives become positives and the positives are negatives. So in the, in the document, the, in all the letters, God is referred to as the enemy. Rejection of all the enemy's silly nonsense and claptrap must win in the end. What Lewis did brilliantly was this whole timeless advice that it's, it's almost like a scalpel in human nature. He, he's able to dig in and show how screw tape or wormwood dupes us into falling into ways of thinking and falling into patterns that allow us to sin. All has been occupied by noise. Noise, the grand dynamism, the audible expression of all that is exultant, ruthless, and virile. Noise, which alone defends us from silly qualms, despairing scruples, and impossible desires. The melodies and silences of heaven will be shouted down in the end. I, I th I've gone home every night absolutely shattered from playing this. I knew it was going to be a big challenge when I, when I started reading it because I just thought, how do you energise it and how do you kind of connect with it, which is, which is going to be listenable to. And, 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 um, but I, I, but, I th but it, it is a matter of pure acting, actually. It's a matter of just getting into character. There's two things when you're casting a radio drama. One is that the actor has to be a competent actor who has to be able to act what you're asking them to do. But then there's also what I always call the vocal signature. There's a certain something in the voice that makes him sound good or evil or old or young or hopeful or pessimistic. Um, and so... Screwtape had to have this sense of evil. Do you believe all my terms of affection have meant nothing? Far from it. A sense of infinite boredom, sort of jaded, cynical, world-weary. Sometimes I am almost in despair. <sighs> had to be able to have flashes of anger. But I'll deal with you in a way you won't soon forget, you disgusting little... We were thrilled beyond repair when we were able to get hold of Andy Serkis, who is a most remarkable actor uh, who can do so many different things with his voice. I know you're in here somewhere. Come out, my puppet, my... Pigsney. There is great humour, and in, in the screw tape letters, uh, there is enormous, enormous humour buried in there, too. It's on the page when you read it, but it, it needs to be helped off, you know, but it's some lovely, lovely touches in it, I think. C.S. Lewis's sort of 
perceived as being classical music and a bit highbrow. I think our production is going to prove to be a bit rock and roll. It's the one side of a, of a very, very important correspondence that mankind was never supposed to hear or see or read. Um, it escaped somehow from the halls of hell and got into the public domain, in a sense. And uh, so, of course, we now know far more about temptation than we ever did before. And the devil doesn't want us to know these things. These recordings purport to be, and the very idea is clearly ludicrous, of conversations in a place called hell. But, of course, all sophisticated people nowadays are persuaded that there is no such thing as hell, or indeed as the other place. It's incredibly insightful. I think it challenges people on their assumptions about the world and eternity. It's been challenging because, because of, of the, you know, the moral quagmire that is the world we live in today. And, and, and actually, he pinpoints them fantastically. Uh, he makes incredibly salient points um, about human behavior. This production will not only I believe please Lewis fans, but may even get a new audience because of the way we're approaching it, uh, that it will challenge people and, and hopefully bring insight into their lives about uh, the spiritual dynamic of, of the world and of their decision making and uh, uh, of truly of eternity. And we very much look forward to seeing you when the time comes. Meanwhile! Come to me, Wormwood. Come and embrace your increasingly and ravenously affectionate uncle. <laughs> 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 and lunch. <laughs>